You know, I've always been the underdog in, in my life, um, in high school, in college. And, you know, I just want to always go out and prove myself that, that I can play. An underdog he truly is, 34 years into his existence. Today's feature is sort of a continuation of my last video, but respectfully stands alone in its own analysis. I thought about doing he and Randy Foy together, but I honestly looked up to these guys so much that I had to give each the respect and space to stand and be researched alone. And I must say, with the name that's the reverse of a Hall of Famer, champion, and guy considered one of the best shooters in the history of the game in Ray Allen, it wasn't an easy task, but I enjoyed every second of it. Today's feature, Allen Ray, born June 17, 1984. You already know what it is, man. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Get it, man. Allen was a star player for St. Raymond High School, where Jay Wright first recognized his talents. He was a part of a recruiting class that was highly expected to bring Villanova back to the championship, a class that included his backcourt mate and fellow East Coast recruit, Randy Foy. But unlike Foy, Allen did not start for the team in his freshman year. But he was such a scorer that he still averaged almost the same points per game as Foy in 9.7 compared to Randy's 10 points per game. This guy was truly a professional scorer just cold-blooded coming off screens, catch and shoot, and off the dribble. His game was just too smooth. Whenever I watch a prospect, I like to envision them at the highest level and project the positions I see them filling. Upon watching him the first time, it was clear what problems he'd have as a pro. Start number one, size for the position. As a natural scorer, we as basketball players, no matter what level you're at, don't really think about projecting yourself at the next level. Instead, we just score. Put the round thing in the round thing. But in the business of basketball, you have these owners and GMs and coaches that want a certain mold field for their team. And it's somewhat understandable. As a coach, if you have an offense, for example, the triangle offense, where you see the guard posting up in the low post at times, you may want a bigger guard to successfully run that play a la Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant. Both bigger guards that played Allen Ray's position. Ray being just 6'1", 6'2", was just not very attractive entering the league. Let's remember the era he was in. This is important because in the NBA, they tend to see what works and want the same things or close. Allen came into the league at a time the position of shooting guard was played by guards 6'6", six, six or taller. Not all, but that's what was wanted. So even more than Randy Foy, he was already out of position from the beginning. At least Foy played a little bit of point guard in the beginning of his career. In Ray's four-year career at Villanova, he never played the point guard, and that hurt his stock tremendously. Stunt number two, if you're a scorer, go get buckets. While Allen Ray led the Wildcats in scoring his sophomore and junior seasons, it was not like he was scoring Trey Young numbers or even Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett numbers. He never even had a season scoring at least 20 points per game. As a smaller shooting guard, you should be putting up amazing scoring numbers while being efficient. Everything needs to be working for you at that size in order to be drafted, especially in the era he was in. Looking at the draft that year, no shooting guard prospect his size was drafted in the first or second round. If so, that player was averaging an insane amount of points, a la Quincy Duby, who averaged 25 points per game his draft year. With talent like Ray, you would think he would have put up those kind of numbers. He did have Lowry and Foy on the squad, so that was expected. I do think that size for position thing is overrated though. Look, players know their deficiencies and how to counter that to make it happen. A small guard knows he has to have a floater. Kyrie Irving has arguably the best post-up fadeaway in the game right now, and he gets that off on anyone. I think Allen Ray should have been drafted in the first round that year. He wasn't, and I think it's because looking at his numbers in his senior season, at that position, it just wasn't enough to have it happen. Stunt number three, secure the bag. Allen Ray would go on to be undrafted, but being drafted isn't the be-all, end-all, as I'm sure most of you know. 
you can still make a team. Show them you're the real deal and secure a contract just as or sometimes better than guys drafted. Example, Alonzo Trier, undrafted guy that showed the Knicks he was raw and they signed him to a multi-year deal. Allen was able to sign with the Boston Celtics after the draft and made his way onto the floor putting up solid numbers while being fourth among rookies in three-point percentage over the two-month stretch he was there. He looked like he fit in to me, but for some guys, that money comes calling, and it don't matter where it is, we gonna go get it. Allen was courted by a team in Italy at the end of the season, who offered double what the Celtics were. Had I been in that situation Ray found himself in, I'd probably stay close to the NBA and trust that I could make that money back, but Ray wasn't of that mindset. He agreed to terms on a $2 million contract to play in Italy instead of having the Celtics pick up his $687,000 contract. He got his payday, but was out of the league and touring the world ever since. It's unfortunate because imagine the story that would have been to see him, Larry, and Foy in the league going against each other for years. Still, all in all, a great player that inspired my journey and I'm sure a lot of others. Yo, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.